morning all. Now today I'm making some PWM5 microcontrollers. This is what I do when I'm not making YouTube videos. So I thought I'd just um, video some of the processes involved in doing this. So at the moment I'm just crimping diodes onto wires. So let's just do that. That needs a right old hard press. So that's crimped the diode into that metal thing is a, a joining connector from a, a blue butt connector and I just take the middle out so that's crimped but then I also now solder it so let's solder that and I'm not sure how easy this is going to be to do on camera so I've never done that before but let's give it a try so I need to get that hot the diode gets very, very hot during this process, but it doesn't really matter. And I'm feeding solder into that hole, trying to get it to flood in. It doesn't matter the diode getting hot because it's designed to work and be stored at very high temperatures. But I cool it down like that in any case. So that's uh, six new diodes connected to wires, and I store those over here. Um, I've got this stuff called Corex, and it's what they make estate agent signs out of. And I just push the wires into it and because of the square section fluted channels. It just means that the wires over the next few days will gradually straighten out. Now here hanging up is a panel of uh, 28 solar charge controllers and uh, they've been etched and routed so that um, they can be broken out of this panel quite easily. And then I solder, I solder some of the components on while it's still panelized because uh, it's just easier that way to solder them in in bulk. And then I break the boards out um, once I get to a certain stage and solder the remaining components in individually. And so here are four boards that I was soldering up last night. And uh, you can see fairly clearly, I think, that um, there's a MOSFET there. This is the PIC microcontroller. Uh, three transistors here for the high side driver. This is an LP2950 uh, voltage regulator, five volts, capacitors around that. This is the charge pump with two capacitors and three diodes, and that one microfarad ceramic is the store, the charge store for that. Uh, around here we've got some uh, the potential divider for measuring the battery voltage, and that 150 ohm resistor is for the LED. And that device there is a transient suppression diode. And uh, on the underside of the board, I've actually got three surface mount components. There's a 100N capacitor there, um, which I quite like to do surface mount because it sits directly across the power pins. Uh, there's a 220K uh, resistor there. If they fall down upside down, then I actually solder them in upside down. It's not a conscious decision to hide them, it's just the way that they drop onto the board. And then there's another resistor here, which I, I put an option on the board either to put a through hole or a surface mount. I just choose to do it surface mount and that's for the gate of the MOSFET. That's the MOSFET gate resistor. Now the next stage, once the board's been um, populated with components, is to attach the wires. And you can see that they're attached on the back of the board there. And um, if you look at the bare board, you can see how I bend over the wires. Um, these two are for the black wires, which are ground. And these two are where the red and yellow wires connect, which are simply the drain and source of the MOSFET. And the wires solder directly to the legs of the MOSFET. So none of the high current is passing through tracks on the PCB, which has in the past been a problem. So I decided on this one, let's not have that problem. Let's solder them direct. 
and uh, here in the yellow wire are those diodes that I was soldering uh, earlier covered with a nice piece of yellow heat shrink 3 to 1 heat shrink that is now in this sweetie tin I've got um, some of these inner covers which are pre-shrunk to a certain shape and that's um, what goes on to cover the electronics and seal them from moisture because as you can see in each end of the device I've got a slug of hot glue which I pour in to both sides so I've got plenty of them um, I've also got the freshly cut inner sleeves uh, which I just cut to 60 millimeters long but I've got none of the black outer sleeves which are these things which again I pre-shrink to uh, a sort of halfway stage and then uh, do a final shrink with the heat gun when I finally assemble this and then stick the sticker on but I don't have any of those so I'm gonna have to make some so now I'm going to cut some lengths of heat shrink sleeving uh, it's pretty primitive really I just put them on this uh, cutting mat and cut pieces 70 millimeters long for the outer sleeve and this uh, sleeving comes on a roll and uh, here are the two rolls of heat shrink the black heat shrink uh, I've actually run out of the clear heat shrink but I've cut all those now so that's all that I need of those so I'll just cut some pieces of this and then do the pre-shrinking so here are 12 pieces of this I think it's 2 inch or 50.8 millimeter black heat shrink uh, all cut to 70 mil long and I cut them on the lines of my cutting mat of course I've got a nice brand new cutting mat now but um, that explains why my old cutting mat is scored to pieces uh, all along the one centimeter lines it's from cutting these so I'm just boiling uh, a kettle of water not to make a drink this is for dunking the heat shrink uh, pieces of sleeving into to shape them to the partial shape and the way I do this is I take the pieces of sleeving and I put them over this vacuum cleaner nozzle which I located uh, and I liked this one particularly because so I can get the light on it um, it is relatively straight it has this sort of round cornered rectangular profile so I slip the piece of sleeving over there and then dunk it into the kettle once that's boiling and then dunk it into cold water to keep the shape but it's a very laborious part of the process and uh, it uh, makes them wet so they all then have to be dried but it was the only way I could find of getting them pre-shrunk to the shape that I needed them to be right the water's just boiled so now let's try doing this never done this holding a camera before so see how well it goes put that in there okay that's shrunk and then bring it over to the sink okay now as I say I've never done this one-handed before so let's try just this is to remove uh, lime scale and then the final part is to use this release mechanism to take that off and then that goes on there come off for drying if I can get that off there we are so I'll do the rest of those and then dry them up so there are the 12 pieces of uh, black heat shrink sleeving for the outer covering of the charge controller all shrunk to the shape of this vacuum cleaner nozzle so all I need to do now is dry these off so there they are 12 brand new pieces of pre-shrunk uh, heat shrink outer cover uh, made using the uh, rather makeshift vacuum cleaner nozzle and uh, kettle where's the kettle oh, that's over here and uh, kettle technique this is true uh, cottage industry manufacturing so I've just tidied the uh, kitchen sink you'd never know I've been kettle shrinking again I mean I don't want to be told off do I 
So there we are. Now I've got um, 12 pieces of outer heat shrink. And then one final thing I need to do is punch the hole where the LED shines through. And for that I use this old pair of punch tool. Ancient thing it is actually. I found this on eBay. So punch that hole. And there's the hole for the LED. Now you might be wondering quite justifiably I suppose why I use this technique of using two pieces of heat shrink uh, rather than some sort of plastic enclosure and well it all comes down to economics I mean these pieces of heat shrink are I think it's uh, two pence or three pence each approximately and uh, the lowest cost enclosure I could find was around a pound and one of the problems I'd have had there is that it wouldn't have had a hole for the LED. So I just thought, well, let's go for the lowest cost solution. Um, yes, it's going to be uh, longer winded in manufacture, but at the time I was willing to sacrifice time for cost of materials. Now also, if you're thinking this is one big advert for my PWM5 solar charge controller, it really isn't because I no longer sell it. Um, I've got a little bit of a waiting list uh, of people who want to buy it, but on July the 21st, um, I'm going to stop selling it for good. And then what I'm thinking of doing is uh, doing a series of videos on sort of how this thing came into being, uh, the electronics design part, the software, and the packaging, and uh, things like CE marking, and how I took this to market. Um, it was about a year in development and I've been selling it for about four years and when I stop selling it I can really blow the lid on this product and uh, go into some detail about how it works and uh, my experiences of actually manufacturing electronics without using cheap labour. And my plan now of course is to replace the PWM5 with an Arduino PWM solar controller which will use all the same techniques that the PIC micro version uses but running in the 328P and uh, I'll take a lot of the circuitry from here, the MOSFET, the high side driver, the charge pump, 5 volt regulator probably won't need because that's already on the board, a couple of resistors to uh, measure the battery voltage, all that will go onto a small board which will sandwich on top of this um, Pro Mini and then that will become an open source replacement for the PWM5 and uh, then I can start talking about uh, the PWM5 um, and if it's uh, of interest I can go through how this thing was prototyped here are a couple of um, the early prototype units and here actually is the very first prototype uh, unit built in a completely different form factor but I can go all that, through all that stuff um, if it's of interest. And uh, talk about the pros and cons of um, doing small scale electronics manufacturing basically from home.